Hello, my name is Philip Cameron, and this is Daily Faith. I am so glad you are going to spend the next wee while with us as I share with you something that I think will bless your heart. In Scotland, where I'm, if you wonder where my accent from is from, I'm Scottish. But we have a, a song. It's like the, the second alternative national anthem of our country. And I'll tell you why in a wee minute. But I think you'll be blessed by what you hear today. I'm with my daughter, Melody, and we're going to be sharing with you about what God is doing through our ministry in Moldova. You need to stay tuned. I think you'll be blessed today when you're watching. This is Daily Faith. Welcome back. We are so glad you're with us. And I want to share something with you that's like kind of part of my history. Um, and, and it's also part of a testament that I, that I have. My favorite scripture in the whole Bible is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures beside still waters. One day I was praying and, and uh, we had moved to America. When we first came to America, I've been here now for 50 years. But my wife and I, Chrissy, we moved here, um, oh dear, in 1983, so you can do the math how long we've been here. And how it came about that we, were, that we, were, uh, we moved to America was that we were traveling one night to Montgomery, Alabama. This is, people say, why do you live in Montgomery, Alabama? I'm going to tell you why. We were driving through the night in an old Greyhound bus that we had, converted into a, a, a traveling coach. And it was the middle of the night, maybe, oh, two in the morning, and I'm driving the bus. I was preaching in a church in Montgomery on the Sunday morning service. This was late Saturday night. And my son, Philip, who is now almost 40, was sleeping in a bassinet beside me on the floor in this bus. And I'm driving to the, to the church service. And the next morning, a man came up to me called Gerald Cruz. And he came up and he says, have you ever thought of settling down in America? And actually, I had the night before because I looked down at Philip. And I came to the conclusion that I couldn't keep him a nomad traveling in, in a bus around the, the country without having a friendship and, and a church home, etc. And I says, yes. I says, I actually thought about it last night. He says, well, my name is Gerald Cruz, and I own a mobile home park. And I sell mobile homes. And if you're interested, I've got a repossessed mobile home. You can come and take over the payments. I said, I'll see you in the morning. So the next morning, we went out and looked at this repossessed mobile home for $195 a month. And we moved in and became Alabamians in that one moment. And uh, we were there for a number of years. And in those days, Jim Baker, who was a dear friend of mine, he, he, I, I would go and speak at the PTL in Charlotte over the New Year season and Christmas time because all my family was in Scotland. And, and literally thousands of people would come to PTL to, to watch and be a part of the Christmas thing because it was a lot of lonely folk. So I thought, well, I, I've, got, I've got no ties to stay in Montgomery. I've got no family coming over because they're all in Scotland. So I would go up there. And uh, so this particular Christmas, we were, we were at Jim Baker's at PTL. And, and uh, by the way, this program that we produce is done by the grace and kindness of Jim Baker and Laurie Baker. And we, we are so grateful for them. And uh, so we went, we went to PTL. And while there, someone burglarized my mobile home and set the thing on fire. And we drove through the night back after um, camp meeting, and we, we drove into, into the place, the mobile home park, and there was an old fella called Archie. He was an alcoholic, lovely old man, kind man. And as we pulled in, he heard our bus, the diesel engine of our bus, and he came out, and he came over, and he says, oh, he says, I'm so sorry, Philip. And I says, what's wrong? He says, someone, someone burned your mobile And when, <laughs> when the lights of the bus hit the mobile home, I saw it. It was completely destroyed. All of the stuff we'd saved up, all the Melody's little dresses that Chris had been buying in, in, in Kmart in those days, and we'd, all the pictures of the kids and all the history was all gone in a moment. And we sat in the bus and cried for a while. And the Lord had put this scripture on my mind. It's never far from my mind, really. The Lord is my shepherd is, is always just part of my, my world. If I pray, I'll, I'll remind him of him being my shepherd. And this revelation of the Lord is my shepherd. You see, 
In that scripture, the Lord is my shepherd, the most important is the first three words, the Lord is. When David said the Lord is, he immediately released God to be what he called him to be. So when, she, when David said the Lord is my shepherd, he allowed that nature of God, the, the shepherd of God, to activate in his life. So as Chrissy cried and I held in my arms, our little world had gone up in smoke. I says, Chrissy, listen to me. I says, this is not a disaster, although it feels like it. I says, but it's, it's an opportunity for the Lord to be something in our lives. And she was sobbing. And I says, why don't you tell God what you want him to be? The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is, I says, what do you want the Lord is to be in your life? And through our tears, she says, I want a real house, not a mobile home. I says, okay. I says, we're, we're going to believe God for a real house, not a motor home, mobile home. I says, what else? She says, I want four bedrooms so the kids, Maldi and Philip, could have their own room. I says, okay. She says, I want a washer and dryer place, a separate laundry room. I says, okay. So we made this list as to what we needed the Lord to be in our lives. It seemed impossible. It was crazy. Anyway. The next day, I called back to PTL to a fellow called Porter Speakman. And he was one of the executives of PTL, and, and we'd become friends. And I, I talked to him, and he says, how's your year been so far? I says, oh, you won't believe what's happened. I says, the Bible College in Scotland had the roof blown off in a hurricane, which that happened as well, this, all the same time. I says, and, and my mobile home was burned to the ground. He says, oh, my goodness, that's so sad. Let, I've got to go. And he hung up, unknown to me. He called Jim Baker. And Jim was in Hawaii doing television programs. And when, it, when Jim heard about what had happened, he says, tell Philip I'm going to give him $15,000. Now, this is in 1984, maybe 85. That was a huge amount of money. That was more money than I ever dreamed. And, and so Porter called me back and he said, I've just talked to Jim and he wants to help you in your housing situation. I said, that's crazy. So I said, to, I said to Chrissy, I said, look, we can go out and look at houses. I said, we've got a deposit for a house. So we went out to 849 Balfour Road in Montgomery, Alabama. And we walked in, and this couple was standing there. And I didn't know that you, that you shouldn't talk to the, the clients. The, the, it's, that's the real estate business's job, not mine. So I walked in, and this couple was standing there. And I says, hi, I'm Philip Cameron. Let me tell you this deal. And they were asking like $25,000 deposit and stuff. I says, my name is Philip Cameron. I says, God, we lost our mobile home. Jim Baker gave me $15,000. That's all I can give you. And the real estate woman's jumping up and going, oh, no, 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 you can't speak. Shh. We bought the house. We moved out of a mobile home into a, into a, into a beautiful four-roomed house, bedroom house. Because we had the faith to say in the middle of our tragedy, the Lord is. A pastor down in Louisiana, his name is Roy Stockstall. Some of you may know his son Larry Stockstall from Bethany. He heard our situation. And Bethany Baptist Church sent us $5,000. I met a man called Luther Morgan outside my house, the, this new house. I walked out the drive and he was there on a Honda Goldwing motorcycle. And I says, hey, Luther, I says, let me tell you what happened. And I told him, he says, hold on a second. And he went to the back of his bike and took out a measuring tape. He says, take me in and let me see the house. And he went in and he started measuring all the, all the rooms. And I'm saying, what are you doing? He says, well, I don't know if you know this, but I own, I own a carpet shop here in Montgomery. He says, come down. He says, I'm taking all the measurements. Come down here and pick any carpet you want. We want your, your house to be newly carpeted. A woman who owned a store with washers and dryers gave us a brand new washer and dryer. Literally within two weeks of losing everything that we thought was important, all the precious things that we had lost, because in the middle of the panic, I, I claimed something that's in the scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. And what I want you to do today is this. In your circumstance, what do you want the Lord to be for you? What do you need in your life that only God can give? The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my protector. The Lord is my salvation. Whatever you ask God to be, whenever you confess that, that he is, you are allowing him the latitude to move into your life and begin to do what you've called and, and released him to do. So when we found out that the Lord is our provider for a house in Montgomery, Alabama, within two weeks we had a crazy thing happened. 
I forgot about this. I'm going to tell you. I might as well tell you the whole story. The, the, the insurance company called me and they says, we want you to meet the adjuster at that place. So I got out there and the guy was wearing a tartan bonnet, a plaid bonnet. I said, oh, I like your hat. He says, I, he says, my folks are from Scotland. I says, are you kidding? I said, I'm Scottish. He says, really? He says, what do you want to do here? I says, well, I says, we, we, we're getting a proper house. He says, so you want me, you, you want me to, to just write the whole thing off? And he gave us the most ridiculous settlement for that mobile home, worth way more than I'd paid for it. And that money was allowed us to complete our move out of a mobile home in America into a proper house. And that's how we started 30-odd years ago in America. Because in a bus, when our world had literally burned down around us, I had enough confidence in the God that I served to tell Chrissy, my wife, you tell the Lord what you want him to be. So from now on, every time you ever see that scripture, the 23rd Psalm, the shepherd's psalm, I want you to say to, to the Lord, Lord, you are my, and tell him, you are my healer. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus that every circumstance that you find yourself in, that you must always remember that the Lord is there with you. This is not just a church Sunday Jesus that we serve. He keeps a night watch over us at nighttime. No evil will fall our dwelling place. He gives angels charge around us at night. We have guardian angels. He never slumbers or sleeps. He is continually with you on his mind. And he with all the resources in heaven, with all the, the wealth and wisdom and power at his disposal, is waiting for you and I to identify him in the realm we need him to be. And I pray for you, and I pray for me too, that we'll never forget that he is. He is a reward of them that diligently seek him. He is faithful. And I pray that every need in your life will be met today. In Jesus' name. And now you know how Philip Cameron ended up in Montgomery, Alabama. I'm almost a southerner. I've just got to get my tongue changed and I'll be right. We'll be back in a moment. Watch this. This is an interesting book. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. We leave that address and that number up on the screen for a wee while. I want you to get this book. I want to come into your life and be a part of the Lord is... Salve, saving my family. I want you to confess that in the name of Jesus. You have no loved one in your life that's too far away from the hand of God. No one. I don't care how bad they are. I don't care how dark the situation is. I don't care how impossible you think it is. The Lord is able. The Lord is. And I want you to speak a, the Lord is word into your life today to let you know that every need, every need you have in your life is literally one prayer away. You can speak to him. And you can say to him, I want, you know a diamond has many facets? You know how they cut that diamond and the, and, and the light sparkles through the diamond because of the facets? God has many facets. There's areas of God that we've never explored yet. There's parts of his kingdom and his wisdom and his power and his might and his wealth that we've never touched because we can't see it. And just because we can't see it, we don't know it's there. And the devil will keep us in darkness and despair and let us worry about things when if we could only understand that God is big enough to meet our needs. And this book is, the, is written specifically 
for you to see your family saved. You are not too late to get all of your family with you in heaven. Send for full house, and I think you'll be blessed by it. We are having a tremendous season right now in Moldova. Our kids are out having camps. What we do in Moldova, for those that maybe you've never heard and seen us before, we have a mission work in Moldova that cares for young ladies and young men that are put out on the streets from the orphanages. When a girl turns 16 or a boy, they're given a few dollars and a bus ticket to whatever name appears on their birth certificate. Now, many of these kids have never been in the village apart from when they were born, or it was a regional place, and you may, you may be born in, you know, outside of Charlotte, and your birth certificate is held in Charlotte. They don't know anyone. And they're put on the street, and they've nowhere to go, and they go to the bus station, because in, in Chisinau, from whatever orphanage, they go to the main town, and then they p get a bus to wherever they're going next. And when they get to Kishnau, there's lights there. It's a city. In the villages, there's no lights. There's, just side, there's no sidewalks. There's no roads. It's just mud. So when they get to the lights of the city, they stand. I've, I've seen them standing in the bus station. A little plastic bag with all the possessions in the world and a little plastic thin bag. And a man will drive up in a Mercedes Benz or a woman, worse still, will, will walk up and say, I'm looking for a, a, a nanny, a, someone to babysit my grandkids or my daughter or whatever. And a wee girl that's had no experience, naive, knows about trafficking, but she's going to have to sleep in the night on the ground. And they get in a car and they're beaten and raped and beaten and raped until they are destroyed. And in Moldova, which is one of the biggest engines of these young ladies, we have been there for 20 years, saving lives, changing lives. Some of the very first young women we met are now married with babies and, and call me grand and never mind dad anymore. It's amazing to watch. It really is. But I want to encourage you to be a part of what we're doing. And we have homes there. We take them out of the orphanage. We put them back in school. And we show them the gospel of Jesus through love and action. And we're turning orphans into sons and daughters. And then when they get the fact that they're a son and a daughter, they become missionaries for the kingdom of God. And we are seeing tremendous impact because of what God is doing through these young folk. And I want you to meet one of the young men. Sergio is a tremendous young man that has been with us for many years. And... Um, You'll love his testimony. Watch this. Hi, everyone. My name is Sergio. I lived with both parents like everyone else. But in one day, something tragical happened in our family. At uh, a young age, I lost my father to an illness. And my mother abandoned me and my sister to work abroad she decided to give us to the orphanage and uh, after that I realized that uh, the life would never be the same. There I feel uh, unloved, lost, empty, rejected and the teacher said that I am a mistake and uh, I will never uh, amount to anything. After I finished nine grades, I didn't know where to go. And in one day, a miracle happened. The Camerus family who worked here in Moldova with orphans, they accepted me to be a part of their family and to continue my studies. They have inspired me by believing in me. And I was amazed at how God can turn the things around for the better. Their love has given me hope, and I am so thankful because I was alone. I've been through pain, fear, and there was no one to love me. I was rejected, but now none of that matters anymore because I am redeemed. And no one except God has the power to determine my worth. I was rejected, but now I am redeemed. I love it. I absolutely love it. He came to us a broken young man. His sister was in our homes, the, the girls part of the ministry. And um, she told us about Sergio. 
and we took him into our lives. And the village that we're building in Moldova, he has been working, apart from going to school, he has been working in, in the village, helping us get the place ready in Vada Village. And that's another miracle. We, only, we don't only help young ladies, but we help young men as well. And, and we're seeing these young men grow up. In fact, one of the young men, we, 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 part of our lives, his name is Radu. And recently, Radu got married to a lovely girl. And um, it's amazing to watch these kids that were little, little unsure, uncertain, broken lives when they come to us grow up and stand up and be tall and turn into great people and great men and women of God. All of that happens by people like you supporting our ministry. We are at the moment in a tremendous phase of growth and development. We, built a, we bought a village that was almost finished in, in construction. It is a beautiful place that was built for rich folks to have a summer home beside the lake, the largest lake in Moldova. The government poisoned the lake. There was algae there, and they tried to kill the, the, the algae by putting in chlorine. Don't laugh. They put, they put truckloads, triple axle truckloads of chlorine into the lake. Killed everything. And this project of six houses. It sat there for nine years, and the Lord literally brought it into our lives and it was a tremendous step of faith and we are happy to tell you that the Lord has provided almost a million dollars for us to buy the property now. We've fixed all of the houses except two that we're working on and we're believing God for the funds. They're $45,000 each to finish. And uh, Sergio was part of building and finishing those homes. It was amazing. He would take pictures and send them to me and say, Dad, I am so excited about Vatra Village. And we are believing God, and this is something you can help us with. If you go to our website, philipdcameron.com, Melody, my darling daughter, who's been sitting here silent all this whole program. I, do you ever fall asleep when I'm speaking? No? I'm not answering that question. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say. But she has, she has been going. She, she does all the interior design of the house, all the curtains matching the bedspreads and the bedspreads matching the towels and the rug on the floor and all that crazy stuff that I have no interest in whatsoever. And there's a way that someone watching the program can literally purchase some stuff mm -hmm. for Vatra Village. That's right. We have it set up just like um, you've had your um, daughters gotten married or a friend has had a baby and they um, set up a registry at the local Target or Walmart store. Well, that's exactly what we've done for these houses. We've gone and chosen everything from those stores in that way that you can go down to the store in person and go shopping. Or go online. Or you could sit at the kitchen table in your pajamas and go onto the website and shop that way. If you um, shop online, everything ships directly to our office. You don't have to do a thing other than click, click, click. Or if you want to go to the... That's a why uh, shop. I click, yeah, click, click. I'm, I like that. I figured it out finally. <laughs> I'm a genius at um, I can Amazon and, oh, I can get yeah. myself in trouble real fast. Yeah, so we've set it up. You can go on to Target. You go to the philipdcameron.com website, and it'll give you all the instructions you need to go to the stores and to find, um, to find and, their, those lists. And you, lists. Can, you can buy something from as little as a, a pillowcase all the way up to a bed or a sofa or whatever. I mean, it's all there. Right. You can literally do the whole thing. And you can make a difference in these people's, young folks' lives in Moldova. And the greatest need we have, the challenge of our lives is this. Every one of these houses at Vatra Village, everyone needs sponsoring. And it's going to take 120 people per house giving a dollar a day. And if you would like to be part of 120 folks opening the doors to these houses, to young men like Sergio that you just met, kids that have been disowned by their parents, abandoned by their parents. Some are real orphans with no mom and dad, both are dead. Most have been abandoned by alcoholic-driven parents, just have no interest. And when they get to the orphanage, the teachers there and the, the people that care for them, and I use the word care carelessly, or it's... Lightly. Yeah, lightly. They say, you're nothing. You're, you'll never be anything. Your mother didn't want you. Your father doesn't want you. And they come to us in this broken state, and the gospel transforms our lives. And we turn orphans into sons and daughters. 
and sons and daughters into missionaries. And I know you would like to be a part of that. For every 100 people, 120 people that are watching this program, if you are one of those, you are going to open the doors to one of the houses. There are six altogether in Vatra. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you can see the fields that are white at the harvest. The Lord is their salvation. And as you provide this means to help them go through life, go back to college, find out about Jesus and become missionaries, this will return back into your life, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Call us today. The number's on the screen. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124.